Did you have um, a lot or any uh, trepidations about bringing a movie like this, or uh, sorry, a book so popular to the screen? I mean, what were you thinking when you yes. took this on? <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, and it gets worse and worse. The more successful the book is, the yeah. more obliged you are to, to uh, the readers. Um, but you're also obliged to people who have not read the book. And, and uh, um, the challenge, I mean, the way to, to fulfill that challenge is just do your best and concentrate on turning the best possible film out of what you've got, the script and the uh, conditions and the, all the gifts you get from when you shoot. And then um, uh, try to just think of all those expectations as a positive element of this whole process. But yes, it's scary. <laughs> because I guess by the time, you, when you started filming, the book had been successful then in the last year, you know, it seems to have taken off even more. So I guess it, but do you but get- But I have to, the, the good thing about living in a foreign country, which I do, is that I read the script and the book was not out in Denmark yet. And I just read it and think, wow, this is a really, really good script. And I love these characters and it's unpredictable and it's very moving and the dialogue is funny. And I, you know, read it. Uh, from a different standpoint, and then later, all the, the and when you uh, when I arrived in London and saw the book in every shop window, that of course changed uh, the the idea of the project. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering. I mean, when you when you read the script, and it's obviously casting is central for a story. I mean, it's a pretty small cast. It really is. It all hinges really on the two main characters. And I mean, were you really? Did you think that it would be a very, very difficult movie to cast before you found Jim and Ann? Um, I, I was actually more concerned about Dexter. It seems like there's a, a, a generation, there's a gap between uh, Jude Law's generation and Robert Pattinson's. Uh, but there are some really good actors in that age range coming out of, of England. And, but of course, we would look around uh, to other English-speaking countries until uh, Jim entered the room and was obvious. There's something about him. He's, uh, he's a very contemporary actor. He has a wide range. And uh, he's, he's uh, relaxed and confident in his own skin the way uh, Dexter is in in his early years, mm -hmm. so and then I think he really lived up to all our expectations. He he did a job that was better than I had hoped and imagined. Mm -hmm. And what about Anne? Because I mean, it's she's this insanely glamorous Hollywood star. You know, it's kind of like her frumpiest role, and I use frumpy in inverted commas. Was in Devil Wears proud of her? She's supposed to be fat. You know, it's kind of <laughs> and, you know, and it's. I mean, did you see something in her, her past work or when you met her that you thought, OK, this is, this is my Emma? Well, if you look at all her films, you see uh, a, a, a lot of a, a easy access to emotion, someone who's very professional uh, and uh, a warmth that is extraordinary. Uh, and all of that added up. And knowing that it had to be someone that was really experienced because the part is so hard made it uh, convincing that she or her version of Emma Morley felt right. Um, I remember when we cast an education that Nick Hornby at some point said, we, but they're all so beautiful. And But I suppose the next thing you're going to say is that Halle Berry has signed on to be the wardrobe girl in a in a, a, a scene where she's not going to say anything and but and and but you know they are just more beautiful than the rest of us and you have to live with it uh, and so there is a certain tolerance for people being more beautiful on screen than they are in books and uh, i hope people will still see through all of Anne's beauty and see a, a real character there because I think she nails down Emma Moley and she there is an Emma Moley living somewhere inside Anne and if not she's an actress and they always act something that they are not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering do you have a favorite um, kind of movie romance that you kind of hold up or maybe one that you had in mind when you were directing this movie? Um, I think a lot of the films I like or love the most have love stories built in either as the main theme or subplots and I, I 
find it hard sometimes to, to see a film that does not have love and humor in it. Uh, but the list is long, and every time I talk about my favorite films, I immediately feel guilty about other films that I don't mention. Um, it's, uh, it's, and it's a privilege to work with something that you love as much and have loved as long as I have. It's, uh, I, I just really enjoy cinema more than many, many other things. <laughs> in life. I was trying to find out earlier on what's what's next for you. Your IMDb isn't revealing anything and I'm just wondering do you have another British, is there another British story that you're willing to tackle or is there something are you, do you have your eye on something at home or in America? Um, I, I really like to work here in England. I have my eye on an Irish project as well actually. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I think the wise thing to do is to just see let this film see this film to the door first and then um see what else i can um do to do something where you try to seriously just make a proper film and not fall for any kind of temptation just because you like to work so much mm -hmm. but to stop and think <laughs> thank you it was a pleasure thank you so thank much. you I mean, I <laughs>